Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. This video here, I'm looking at a, um, a piece of property for a guy, um, Eamon. Uh, thank you for letting me take a look at your property and hope I can help you out as much as possible. I didn't um, delete all this stuff here due to the fact that uh, there was so much of it. And um, it'd be you know difficult to know where everything is. Okay, so the first thing I, I look for, obviously, in your email, um, you had said that um, you, you had two spots available and had to be within 200 yards away from each other. So one of the first things I look for is some of the some of the spots where there's something like that. Um, and this area here at the bottom has um, you know some area to it that's that's available. Um, this area here has a little bit right in here possibly. This area here might have some, you know, out into here. And this area here's got a little bit um, here and there, maybe, you know, not a, not a lot. Um, and this area here may have a couple spots. Okay, so that, you know, was the first thing I looked for was was, you know, what kind of area, you know, that that you could get 200 yards away from someone else. Um, there's a spot right in here, and actually, it's a decent looking spot. We'll talk about it. I'm here in a minute. Then the second thing that I looked for um, was I just basically zoomed in and I want to look, I just basically looking at the area here. Um, you know, when I look at this, I want to see what I've got here. Obviously here, uh, let me pull my pen up here. Um, all this, this area up in here, um, right in here is you know some stripped pines and stuff and then here um, you have to go back in time let me change the the uh, I want that so wide it's so wide it's it's too wide um, but this down in here we have to go back in time to look but this is an old clear cut here um, right there that's an old clear cut. And then, like I said, this is some, some stripped pines. So that leaves me to believe this is going to be a pretty thick area, or at least when I first look at it. And then, um, just for so you understand what I'm looking at, um, I'll go back in time because that's very important is going back in time. So right here we're looking at, um, this was took in October of, of 2015, this picture here. So, you know, let's scroll back in time here to an older picture. What we're looking for is when this stuff was cut. Um, here's uh, 2009, this picture here is, you, you see here. This was actually, this picture was actually took um, in May of 2009. Um, and you can see that this, okay, so, here, this is 2008, okay? This picture here was took in June June 17th of 2008, matter of fact, and this has not been stripped. So I go back here and uh, almost a year later, you know, within just a, a few weeks, um, this has been stripped here, okay? And another thing, this area here has been, been clear cut where it wasn't cut in this picture okay so this whole area here has been clear cut to where it wasn't okay you see the clear cut you see the stripped okay um, you see that here okay so I'm looking at how old this is so that's letting me know that um, let me change colors here and we'll um, that's letting me know that you know, this area here, all of the, this clear cut here, we're going to include that even though that creek in the middle is not clear cut. That's letting me know that this and all of this um, was cut in, you know, we're going to say, you know, beginning of 2009, 2008, 2009, either way. It's cut 2008, 2009. So we're looking at a six, seven seven to eight years worth of growth so that's going to be very thick um, that kind of timing is usually very good bedding areas lots of bedding going on 
um, lots of food still in there, okay? Um, so that's got me, you know, that has me interested. Because anytime you have a lot of bedding, big areas like that where deer can bed, um, even when there's hunting pressure, these deer can get away from people, okay? Um, you know, because you can't get get to them. So this 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 area interests me when I when I see that, and that's you know what I'm what I'm looking at there. And then now I'm going to continue to go back because now I'm interested in when this when was this clear cut made, okay? Um, and you know we go back 2008, and you can tell there it's it's a lot younger. Okay, so there, this picture here is 2006. It's actually June the 30th of 2006. Um, this picture here is June the 17th of 2008. So this thing is that eight, eight or nine years, eight or nine year old clear cut. So this thing's still real thick, still got a lot of bedding in it. So this entire area has lots of food, lots of thick cover, lots of bedding. And then when I realized this, these are the type of areas that I look for on public property. Um, it really, really is. And I, you know, obviously I don't know where every single stand is like you do. Um, but what I look for and what, what I, if I were you, um, what I would be looking for if I was hunting this property, or, you know, I know I have bedding. I don't have massive food. This is year-round food. Anytime you have these clear cuts, these stripped uh, areas, you're going to have, a, you know, year-round food. Um, we'll go to this picture here, okay? And I'm going to erase this this stuff here. Um, we know how old this stuff is um, and everything, so I'm going to erase that. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I have year-round food here. I've got um, heavy cover. You know, there, there's, I don't see, you know, I don't see, a lot of times when I, when I see this, I look for, you know, water um, in, within here, you know, because sometimes if you can find, what I'm looking for is a destination area within this, something that's going to take the deer to one spot for a reason, because in reality, um, these deer can go anywhere. They can bed anywhere in this, they can bed anywhere in this old clear cut, they can bed anywhere anywhere in this clear cut. Okay, this one here was eight nine years old over here. Um, this one was eight or nine years old. Um, you know, and th this one here, I think we said it was six or seven or seven or eight. Um, we're going to just say it's seven year old. Okay, I don't remember. And then this was I think was seven. Okay, these were the same time. Um, so. They're, the deer can be anywhere. They can feed anywhere, especially early season um, when the acorns are dropping. They can feed, you know, basically anywhere. So what I'm looking for is a destination spot. I, one of the first things I look for is water, okay? Um, because if you have water within a, you know, say a pond or something within inside of one of these, um, it's a good destination spot, okay? It's something where, where every deer is going to visit at some point in their life or, you know, during the hunting season, they're going to, every single deer is going to be there. Okay. So this, I don't see any. So then the, the next thing that I look for is something that a different type of food source, because there's food everywhere, um, due to the fact that, you know, we've got a clear cut, um, and the ages of it and there's bedding everywhere. Okay. So the only other thing they would need would be either food or water because this is because every deer, no matter how old they are, whatever, they all need certain things. They need food, they need cover, they need water, okay, and then they need space, okay. So they've got the food everywhere, okay. So we, we know there's food everywhere. There's cover everywhere. Uh, we're limited on water. We don't see any water, okay. Um, and then they have the space. I mean, there's obviously they're not fenced in into a you know two or three acre area. I mean, this is they're, they're free roaming deer, so they've they've got the space. So the only other thing that we can that I'm looking for is some different type of food, a timing, something that I can time and say, hey, this is going to be a food at a certain time, because a clear cut, you know, they're good. Old these old clear cuts, they're good because they have a lot of browse, you know, in the summer, um, you know, through the winter once the uh, 
the the heavy cold the heavy freezes and stuff hits they're going to have some some buds and stuff on trees or they've got they've got the you know food but i mean we're talking something that we can time something we knows when it's going to hit at a certain time and i did find on this area um, possibly okay so what what do i what i look for now that i've gotten to this area and i still think this is a productive area so what am i looking for and in this particular spot um, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to show you what I found because we have cover everywhere, couldn't find really water. Um, but one thing that I did find was in the middle of all of this cover, there are deciduous trees. Okay, and what I mean, what a deciduous tree is, is a tree that loses its leaves. All your oak tree, all oak trees are deciduous. All your hardwoods, maples are deciduous. Uh, gum trees, there's just, there's a bunch of, it's, it's trees that lose their leaves in the winter. You know, you have evergreens and deciduous. Um, but when you find deciduous trees like this in the middle of all these evergreens, in the middle of all of this cover, leads to me, leads me to believe almost always you're going to have oak trees. And when you have oak trees, you have acorns. Okay, so what better than to have, you know, what is this probably, I mean, this is just a guess. This is probably three or 400 acres. Well, let's just measure it. Um, we won't get the acres right on the go, but let's just, let's just see here. Um, we're talking about, oh, this thing's, this thing's big. This thing's huge. It's almost a square mile. Okay, we're talking, you know, probably 400 acres. Or three probably 300 acres, probably about 300 acres here, pretty close here. So what better than, you know, 300 acres of heavy cover to have some some bands of oaks in the middle of it, small bands of oaks, not like where the deer can just go anywhere, okay? Let's say the acorns start dropping here. Um, deer that this is their, their, their core area, um, you know, we're looking here in this, in these trees here, erase this and I can draw here um, these bands right here have deciduous trees in them and that leads me to believe that there's going to be oaks in there um, and we're not talking about big huge area it's not like you have you know 50, 100 acres I mean we've got you know maybe 30, 40 acres total, if you add it up, of, of oak trees, and we've got 300 acres of, of heavy cover, okay, with food everywhere. It's good prime habitat. It's diverse, um, and we have oak, little oak flats here and there all, all out through this. Um, that's where I would be looking to put a stand, and I would, I would realize that when these, when these deer are... When, the, when these deer, when the, these trees are dropping acorns, these deer are gonna, uh, they're gonna hit them hard for food. That's gonna be their 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 uh, primary food source. It's gonna be their preferred food source at that time. I'm trying to get my, my mouse up. Um, it's, it's gonna be their preferred food source. When I look at this area, I look at this. Um, this stand here is actually a decent stand for a rifle. Um, this one on this power line because you can cover a lot of area here. Okay, um, and then I, you know, I look here, like this stand here. I mean, I don't see what, you know, other than maybe, you know, if deer using this this road, it looks to me like it's just an easy access stand. Um, this one here, no different. Um, when I when I look at these, you know, that's what I see, easy access. This one here, I have no idea why it would be there unless. Well, there's a small little patch of deciduous trees here. See, that may be a good stand. Um, this one here, you know, not sure why. But then I look, and, and I've got this this little oak flat out in here in the middle of this clear cut. Any deer that's around here that want to eat acorns, where are they going to hit? They're going to hit this point. If there's if there's oak trees there, they could be, all be gum. They could all be maple, you know. But very unlikely that there's not going to be any oak trees here. Okay, you may have... I don't know what state you're in. I forgot to, I don't remember. Um, you may have big patches of white oaks in this stuff. I'm, 
90% sure these are going to be creeks and they didn't cut them along the creeks. But there's very likely you, you may get in here and you may find a patch of white oaks. I mean, and there may be some white oak trees. There's just several different varieties of, of, of white oaks. You know, the most one most common that, that I hunt are the, the white oaks with the real flaky bark um, that have the big acorns. You know, deer just love them. But, the, you know, post oak's a type of, of a white oak. A bur oak is a type of a white oak. Um, there's several different types. But regardless, you know, when acorns start dropping, you know, you've got 300 acres of, of prime bedding area. Um, and, you know, you look at this area here. When I look at it, I mean, to me it looks really good because what better than to have a have this point running out here into this this big bedding area you know there's deer going to bed anywhere they can bed anywhere what better to have this point run out in there when they get up and they can feed or they come back from their towards their bedding area they pick up a little a few acorns in the morning before they bed down these are good spots okay um here you know there's there's a finger running out through here um <clears throat> like this stand here it's in a pretty good spot um, here, if it, you know, if it was me, I would want it. And the only reason I'm saying this is just kind of what, what I look for. Um, I'm trying to find my mouse again. When I, when I pull up, I'm looking for like, like this is a decent, but I would, if it was me, I would think that up in here would be better, somewhere up in here. And the reason being, and the reason I'm just telling you this is so that when you're out there, you can keep this in mind. Um, you know, let's just say that that, it, that there's there's deer bedded here, okay? And this deer gets up and it it feed and it hits here and it feeds its way along and mingles, you know, through here, feeds all night long up in here and then turns and, and it comes back, okay? But then, you know, let's just say that, you know, there is a deer bedded here. And it, it gets up and it mingles its way, you know, all night long. And it, it comes up in here and feeds the same way, but then it comes back the same route. Okay. Um, and then let's just say that there's, you know, a deer bedded here. Okay. And this deer comes in and it mingles down, you know, up in up in here and, and it, you know, mingles all night and then comes back. What I'm, what I'm saying there, and there, you know, let's, well, that's off my camera let's say there's a deer you know bedded here and this deer gets up and it mingles its way down through here feeding and, and does the same thing okay you know this isn't a bad spot it's nothing i mean it's not like it's you know awful um here this this stand location here um but i would think that you know somewhere like here would be a little more could be could possibly be a little more productive you know, because anywhere the deer come from, they're going to eventually pass this this point here, okay? Especially in the morning, if if that was what was going on. Let's say if, and this is all, we're just speculating here. You know, let's say the deer are doing this. Um, in the morning, this would be definitely be better because it'd be closer as they're coming back, okay? In the evening, you know, deer over here, you're probably never even going to see. You know, and then that may be where you get into one of these junction points somewhere in here where you have deer coming multiple directions coming past you, okay? You, you want these, you know, these points where they, that, where everything connects, okay? Um, leading up through here. Okay, let me go here. And then, you know, that's like like this here. Um, you know, you could be up. You know, you, it looks to like you may have an oak flat here. I'm not sure on your neighboring property, and it looks like it's kind of high. Yeah, there's definitely some deciduous trees in there. Okay, so you if you've got deer bedded here, there's a good chance they'll hit this line and come up into here, feed at night, and then come back to bed out in here and stuff. Okay. You want to be in, you know, somewhere. I would, I would think somewhere pretty close to this property line, where they're coming out, you know, here. Because the reason is, if that's what they're doing, 
you know, these deer may come out and then come in bed here. You know, instead of walking the whole line. And then, you know, they may break and, and hit here. So you want to be as close to their main area as possible. Now, obviously, if you knew that there was a, a big buck bedded here and he's getting up and he's crossing this, you know, right here, you would want to be as close as possible to his bedding area as possible. You know, that's that's pretty obvious. But main thing is just you want to be in a, conjun a conjunction point, a point where everything meets, okay? And then I look at this area here. Um, it's pretty well congregated. I mean, there's there's people hunting basically all over. And like here, you've got a you've definitely this is definitely within 200 yards from people. You might I don't know. I think you're too close here. You might better get get up in here. Okay, there would be nothing wrong. There would be nothing wrong with setting in here, catching deer as they come. No, I swapped from, there'd be nothing wrong with here, you know, in this area, catching deer as they come through here, and then also catching deer as they come through here. This guy here, if you're 200 yards away from him, you're definitely cutting him off, though. Um, if the deer are coming, you know, from here to here. And I don't know if, I think... I mean, yeah, you're right at 200 yards. I mean, you could move your stand probably there. Yeah. So you could hunt the north side of this thing. You'd be 200 yards. 200 yards away from people. I mean, I think that's something. I mean, you can... main thing here is just so you understand, you know, what I would be looking for on this property. Okay. And there's definitely no doubt here. I mean, there's plenty of room here in this area here. Okay, so this this one here, um, I, I don't know what the, these trees are here. If these are, you know, oak trees, you know, it's it's good looking spot. But for the most part, this entire area to me would be difficult to hunt. You know, other than maybe with a rifle sitting on this row where I could cover some distance. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe like here where I could, if I was rifle hunting, maybe in a tripod stand or something. Um, you know, setting something like this where I could shoot that direction and and maybe that direction for 100 yards or a couple hundred and in this direction. Or I could cover some ground. Other than that, I mean, really this is a difficult block to hunt because the deer can go any direction there's nothing really uh, making them go a certain way for any reason okay you know and now if there was not say if you own this property you know with this thick areas and stuff you could put some food plots in and, and have reasons for deer to be traveling a certain area okay this area here this entire section is completely congested. I don't even think you can find a 200 yard area here. Now here, down in here, you can. Problem is, it's just an old, it's just an old clear cut. But if, depending on where this property line actually is, you know, you could get, if you could get on this 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 oak line that runs through here, this creek. It'd be a good spot. And another thing about them, them oak lines and stuff, they're good rutting areas because bucks like to cruise them creeks up and down them creeks because they they can travel and cover some area fairly quick. And they can scent check these these big bedding areas and stuff. Um, so you could possibly, you know, look in here if, if this is good. And I don't know. I mean, likely this area here, you know, deer could travel anywhere, you know, and I don't know exactly where the property line is. I mean, if the property line cuts like this, you know, I would definitely be thinking about having a stand like here or something, you know, because you have multiple ways that these deer can be coming as they're scent checking all this this stuff. I mean, you've got water here. You've got multiple food. you got diverse habitat kind of deal. But 
up in here is definitely there's no no room. This stand here is not a bad spot, I don't think. It's got all this bedding. It's got this this heavy tree line feeding into this big um, all these these deciduous trees where it merges. Me personally, I'd kind of like it more in this area here, but you know, and then see like here, I mean, you could put a stand out in here, you'd be 200 yards away from people, but it, it would be pointless. You know, unless you could get way up high up above this stuff and look down in it. Now, here's the exact same thing we looked at earlier, possibly. Big clear cut. Um, this one I don't think is as old. I don't remember. Let's go back. I don't think this one's quite as old. I don't remember, though, for sure. There's 2000 something, 2000. Maybe it is pretty old. Maybe it's older. It's actually very old. Okay, it was cut between 2006 and 2008. But then really to me, here's where it looked like it was actually just cleared and ready to be planted like they burn it. There's nothing there. Okay. So these, these can, these this you get all this bedding, and then you have the same thing. I mean, if these if there's some oak trees in here, they're dynamite spots for deer to come out of this all this bedding stuff to come up in to feed while these acorns are dropping. And then one other thing you gotta think of, and I forgot to mention on that lower spot spot is when you find these. When I look on public property, um, some some of the overlooked areas are really close to the road. And the reason that I find them is because they're good areas like this. They're destination areas with inside big bedding areas. A lot, usually 90% of the time they're old clear cuts um, where deer are starting to bed in. Um, or old logged areas. You know, maybe a tornado went through or something. I've, I've hunted stuff like that. Um, you know, bad storm hit, some flatline winds, whatever. But, you know, basically it's the same thing. There's All the trees got knocked down and it grew up thick. Deer bedding in there. Um, but one thing that people overlook a lot is they overlook the spots right by the road, you know, because they think, well, there's not any deer there. And the deer don't care that the road's there. Um, but the good thing when you can find a spot that's right by the road is you can get in and out of it without disturbing anything. You know, basically, um, a spot like this right here, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not, I, I've walked, I walk miles back to a deer stand. But being smart, you know, is not being lazy. I mean, this thing's, you know, 100 yards off the road right here to this, this conversion point where all this meets. If there's oaks in here, I mean, these deer can be bedded here, come up, feed their way through, here, come up, feed their way through. This area here is no different, okay, but it may be too close to everybody else. But you can slip right off this thing right here to a stand, not disturb much. Okay, so that's something to think about when you're looking at at spots like this is how much are you going to disturb? Okay, if you come off this road here, you know, you could hunt, you know, pretty close. Um, this area right here wouldn't be bad either if if it's not too close to these other guys. And, and, you know, as far as the entry and exit, it's absolutely perfect. You know, something like this, you know, that's too close to there. And it's far enough from there, you know, you might get hunt. Yeah, you're still too close. You might better hunt, might, might better hunt the dang road. Boy, you're getting close right there and far enough away. Then you get you're too close here, but anyways, the simplicity of getting in and out is awesome. But the fact that when you're 50 yards, 30 yards off the road, 20 yards off of a something like this, you're you know well, you know you're not disturbing anything. A lot of times I'll park you know like this, walk down the road, and then in if I'm hunting something like that. And I have some spots. I have a couple spots like this. And I have. A lot of my spots are way in the woods, but a lot of times I may park like here, walk 100 yards down the road, and then cut cut in and hunt 30 yards off the road. Um, 
and that's awesome because you're not disturbing any deer i mean there can be deer right here when you walk in out i mean you're not disturbing much you're not going to bump any deer you're not leaving a lot of scent for them to pick up in and out um, kind of thing so think about that and i was going to talk about that on that bottom section and i forgot um let me cut that off this bottom section i was going to point that out let me zoom out real quick we'll figure out where the heck i'm at oh yeah this section here i was going to point out you know like here i don't know i guess this is a high line but you, you might better hit here and then slip in here you know maybe not without disturbing too much especially in the in the morning in the evening if there's deer bed in here that's not going to be a good way to enter um you know here you may be able to come here slip in you know hunt right in here or something um right in here kind of deal so we talked about this and then i think there was the other spot I mean, this, you might could find, you know, here, away from somebody, but I don't really see anything, maybe other than, like, right in here or something, where these deer would be crossing, crossing, following this creek. Um, here, there's a little bit here, you might, you might be able to get in here, you've got all this, this here, check out the, I'm on the wrong date. Okay, I don't know if this has been cut, but this looks like a like a pretty good like swampy type stuff right here to me, like a big swamp that you could you know get on the edge of here possibly. The thing is with the 200 yard deal, there's there's a lot of stands here, but there are a couple of good spots we've talked about. I, th I really think are decent spots. Um, a lot of these guys may be overlooking here. This pink line, and I followed it up, and you can't really see it in this picture, but if you go back, and I'm sure you already know, but there's there's a building or something here. But that's actually, right in here was was a spot that was possibly decent. And the reason these deer, a lot of times, are when they're coming from, from say, here, and they're walking, say, say this, let me get my, draw, my pencil out. Say deer are coming here, and they're walking, say, this way. You know, a lot of times they'll 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 hug close to that creek um, or river, whatever this is. But I know that there's a slough or something here that dumps in. But this was possibly, and it's on the back edge of all this. It's all this strip stuff. It's on the back edge of all this. Okay. And then you need to th also think. I don't know how these guys hunt. But one thing I would think about is, especially like gun, rifle season, you know, how are these how are these guys uh, getting to their stands? Especially when you get down to these areas, it's got a lot of stands here, like this. I mean, how are these guys getting to their stands? Are they are they coming in all from the same direction? Are they driving? What? How are they getting in? Because a lot of times they'll just push deer when they come in. They're just going to push deer like. Like say if a lot of these guys are coming in off of here or something, and they're coming in, you know, coming in like this, you know, a lot of times they'll push these deer back into here and stuff. They'll push these deer into here. And when that happens, you, these little tree lines and stuff like this become hot spots like right in here. Um, kind of stuff like that. Really, really something to keep in mind. And I think uh, you said you was going to check this out in turkey season. I think that's a really good time to check this out because, um, you know, you can see what kind of trees these are and stuff. And you're not going to be disturbing, you know, deer. They're not going to be in here feeding on acorns and stuff like that. They're Right now, they things are greening up. They've got turkey season. Things are greening up. And they've got food everywhere. So you can get in here and, and check this out. What I would be looking for is what kind of trees these are I'm looking I would be looking for destination spots like I talked about something that's going to get the deer to come to a certain 
spot at you know a certain time and when the acorns are dropping there's nothing better than a you know a, a, a 10 acres of 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 oak trees that are dropping acorns in the middle of of two or three hundred acres of, of bedding area you know where the deer are going to be every deer is going to hit them acorns now you know your older deer obviously they're going to hit them a lot a lot of times more later in the evening and early in the mornings but they're still going to do it and a lot of times they'll hit them in the middle of the day especially the beginning of november when that when they're bucks i mean it, it just happens that they start moving more um you know the acorns are still dropping usually for you know another week or two you know, um, or depending on the type of trees, but the acorns are still dropping. There's still some acorns on the ground. These bucks are moving a lot. They're in their core area. They're checking these areas a lot, and they'll hit these, they'll check these areas a lot um, during the middle of the day. You know, that's when you want to be on your stand all day long, but you want to be on your stand in spots where deer are using. And, you know, that first week in November, first two weeks in November, really, maybe the first, the week before the last week of October and the first two weeks of November, prime time, right there. Um, very prime time to be in, in hunting oak flats in the middle of bedding areas like this because you've got a lot of deer bedded around, lots of does. These bucks are going to be checking, um, and they're going to check them food, them feeding areas. They're going to scent check them. There's going to usually you'll find scrapes in there, and they'll check them scrapes in the middle of the day. Okay, um, you know. So that's stuff to look for. When I would be looking at what kind, if I'm pretty sure there's going to be some oak trees here. I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. Here, here, and these other spots we talked about. You want to look, figure out what kind of oak trees they are, and then figure out about when they drop. Here's another spot. Check this out right here. Just seen this. Look at that. <laughs> he got a, just a one splotch of, of of deciduous trees in the middle of this this eight-year-old ten-year-old clear cut and it's right off the road that right there I would check out uh, this I would I would check this out because my gosh you can park here walk right down the road bam you're in your stand you're not disturbing any deer you know morning or evening you can hunt this morning and evening you can hunt it day after day after day especially in the rut if there's acorns dropping here and there's deer bedded around here this is going to be a hot spot. I just seen that. When I zoomed out, I was like, wow, there's, boom. That's the kind of stuff I look for. Really small stuff. Uh, this right here, I, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, this. if I was hunting this, it, this right here, I'd be checking out. Quick like. And uh, if that's oak trees, that's going to be dropping acorns. You know, that's prime stuff right there. I mean, it's. I mean, goodness gracious, you can park here, walk right down the dirt road, boom, right into your stand. You don't leave any scent, nothing, and you're hunting that. If these are oak trees that are here that's going to drop acorns, that's that's good stuff right there. That's one reason I like ponds. I like hunting ponds. A lot of people, I'll say this, um, I hunt ponds a lot. main reason is, you know, I find good ones. You know, they're good to hunt. That's one of the main reasons. Um, number two, the the but the really the, the main reason I like hunting ponds, and in, if you watch a lot of my videos, you see me deer hunting around ponds. The main reason for that is, is when, I, when I'm hunting ponds and a deer comes in, I usually can get it on video. That's the reason you see it on video a lot. It's easy to video a deer on a on, uh, pond. Now, I'm hunting a funnel or something a lot of times. Usually, I don't get the deer on vi video because they're, they're there and gone too fast by the matter of fact i've had several of them i didn't kill because i was trying to get them on video um, i had buck last year two times he got by me i was hunt, not really hunting a, it was sort of a funnel it's actually on the side of a mountain he was bedding up on the side of the mountain and he was coming there was a big washout there was a creek to come down the side of my dry creek but it washed the side of the mountain out and made a big gully well he was having to walk around that gully so he could he could go you know he had to go around it and i was set up there and well the problem is when i seen him both times he's in bow range already and uh um and i had video of him both times i videoed him but the problem is by the time i videoed him he was out of bow range uh, but anyways 
and he was a decent buck and I tried to kill him but uh, he got lucky and um, I don't know if he's alive or not but he wasn't like he was a monster buck but he was a he was a good public land buck you know that 115 120 inch range type deer um, three and a half one and a half year old deer but <clears throat> anyways that's one reason like area like this here um, if you're hunting this, you know, and if say you were self-filming, a deer come in, you would, you know, you could probably sit there and film the deer and shoot it in an area like this. Now, if you're hunting a, you know, an area, now, say he's chasing a doe, you're probably not going to be able to get him on film because um, they're going to be moving. But if he's coming in there to feed, if a buck comes into a water hole and, he go, and he's coming in to get a drink, it's pretty easy to film. You know, he's going to be there in one spot for a few minutes. Um, you know, now if you were hunting, you know, say this right here and, you know, a buck's cruising through in the rut, you may not get him, him be kind of diff, more difficult, but I look for air, stuff like this, small areas, you know, it's like, it's basically like, you know, let's just say I use white oaks a lot, for example, cause I hunt them a lot. Um, I hunt, I like hunting small patches of white oaks. There's areas that I hunt that there's, there's a thousand acres of, of white oaks. I mean, just, you know, maybe not a thousand, but at least four or 500 acres is nothing but white oaks, it seems like. And it would be pointless to hunt there with white oaks. But I have areas that I hunt religiously every year and they produce deer that there's two or three white oak trees. You know, when they drop, they produce deer. When they you say a frost gets them or something, they don't they don't produce any acorns. So there's not going to be any deer. But um, when they do, a little small patch like this is prime. You got a lot of bedding around it, very little food, and you know that any deer here is going to visit this little spot. It's just like this point. That's going to be a good spot. That's going to be a spot where a lot of deer visit. This to me looks like it may be better. It's easy to access. A lot, very little sense going to be. This is something you can hunt a lot. You know, I mean, you wouldn't want to hunt it for the whole deer season. You know, every single day. But when these, if this, say, if these are some white oaks or some red oaks, whatever. Even if they're red oaks, deer are going to feed on them. Uh, when they're dropping is when you want to be hunting them. Okay. <clears throat> So here's another band of that stuff right up through here. Okay, it's another band, and it looks like it con there's a conjunction point right here, conversion point right here where they meet up. So anyways, uh, I, I, mean, um, I appreciate you letting me take a look at your property. And like I said, I, I left this stuff up, these names and stuff, because it was just going to be unbelievably to take them all off. So hope, um, you know, it doesn't reveal anything to anybody but uh you know turkey season i think you can lock you down a couple good spots here um and remember the timing on them okay i don't know if they let you do any on this this property if they let you do any running and then gunning it's basically where you're you know you can move around and kind of bounce around with what's going on but i would have if if they do i would have you know, two stands set up, you know, on, on something that you find, you know, going by different types of stuff that I talked about here um, or whatever you find in turkey season. And then maybe have you a, a climbing stand to do a little bit of running and gunning, you know, where you can, you know, hey, there's, there's, you know, a fresh rub line here, a lot of scrapes, a lot of deer activity I can bump up on real quick. I don't, I don't know how your club works. But I know you said you had to be 200 yards away from people. Um, but anyways, you know, uh, wish you luck. I hope this video helps you out a lot. Anybody else that watched this video, this is a video analysis I've done on, on a property for Eamon. Um, I, I offer this service on my website at deerhuntingschool.com. Um, you can check it out. Um, just go to deerhuntingschool.com, check out the website. It's pretty cool. There's quite a bit of information and stuff on there. Um, you know, and I hope anyone else that watched this learned something from it. And uh, Amen, I hope you learned a lot from it. I hope it I hope it helps you tag a, you know tag you some good tier, um, fill your freezer full of venison, and maybe even get you a, a nice buck or two to brag about. Um, good hunting, uh, you know. Wish you luck this hunting season, um, and I hope you you know have have some good success. And the main thing is I hope you have a lot of fun because that's what hunting's all about. Um, have a good day and bye bye.